have to have some leverage of competency. The sad part is I have no swag, dog. <laughs> All right. I'm a little sus. I, I, I don't know what to do with this one. This oh, breakdown. Boy. The most divisive player in the class, I would argue. You think so? It is it it's very interesting. Coleman. Keon Coleman, Florida State, number four, six. Coming to the stage, six two, 108 pounds. 2023 first team all ACC wide receiver all purpose special team value 2003 career high 11 receiving touchdowns he led his teams he led his teams in receptions at Florida State and also at Michigan State best game Syracuse LSU Clemson worst games Florida Virginia Tech and Louisville played in a slot 150 time 17 percent with a 707 opportunities out wide which he took all advantage of 34 games played 111 receptions 115 receptions 1506 receiving yards 19 touchdowns two drops in 2023 five total drops and 68 first downs 25 punt Returns for 300 yards for an average of 12 yards per catch. This is a complicated breakdown for me because this is the gentleman that I was referring to at the combine who did not look very fluid in his on-the-field drills. People say he had a fast gauntlet. That's great. But the gauntlet was not route running. And I think he and I think Coleman struggles a little bit with consistency when you compare him to Rome, Harrison, Neighbors, Thomas, uh, Brian Thomas Jr., Worthy, Franklin. Just different. And what do I mean by what is he do, what why is he different? A lot of the things that you see Coleman doing is jump ball. I, I think they didn't use Coleman to his full ability. And there were circumstances that were outside of his control, like, oh, the quarterback pretty much having a heck of a devastating injury. Then your backup gets hurt. Then you're, So the constant rotation and the instability because of injury – does play on your psyche, and it does play on the psyche of your coordinator. Because your coordinator's game plan is built on the starter. It's never built on the backup, and the damn show ain't built up on the backup to the backup. You just don't have those contingency plans. You say you do, but you really don't. Even then, Travis played 11 games, so it wasn't like he was without his quarterback. It was just when they needed him late in the season. You know, if if Coleman had and Florida State had gotten into that big four and he had balled out in the playoffs. I think we're talking about this guy like he's the third receiver coming off the board, potentially. I, I, I strongly disagree. You know why? Why? Because his routes at the combine still were not very good. But if like I'm saying if he had those four games, we were just talking off air about MH2 not participating in anything. If he had had a strong playoff, maybe he does the same thing. No, because he was he was number he was actually number four, number five pre-draft before the process started. He's dropped down significantly because of the interviews and the workouts. What somebody will do though is draft him high because no one wants to pass up that what if that potential. Sure, and uh, they. Going back to August, August he was getting drafted about eight in the 18 to 20 range on mock drafts, hundreds of thousands of mock drafts. Come the middle of the season, he was going 10th. And then by the end of the season, 12-9, he was dropping back down to 25th. Now you're looking at a guy consistently getting drafted in the 50s and 60s. Again, none of this matters. It's only one actual draft that counts. But just where public perception has fallen – since when football got done playing to now, he's dropped about 30 spots. 
because of the interviews. People want to look at the interviews. People also have some questions. And you know what I learned about pro days? What's that? So there's a, when you go to a pro day, there's people who obviously like a guy, right? You, you know, you you like what you like, not like a guy, whether you like like him personally. No, or preconceived like notions. Yeah. Yeah, preconceived notions. And you say, you know what, his game, I really connect with. I like what he brings to the table. What I've noticed, these combines come back. In a way, these these pro days where you go, hmm, this com this pro day either made me like him more, or I already did I wasn't high on him, and now I'm gonna go back and watch more film to convince me that I was correct in not being high on him. How how many scouts do you think? change their opinion from those preconceived notions that that's why the, that's why team visits combine sit downs are important they can get a feel for if something happened if there's a i don't want to say rumor but there's sure. a yeah, yeah, yeah. you know there's something there that you go i heard this right i think you're going to see some of A.D. Mitchell was up there, and I think that some things, whether how and what transpired with NIL money, may have kind of dropped him down two spots. Sure. Jermaine Burton, some people are saying the way he ha- way he handled himself at Georgia and how it ended at Georgia, because they do ask this. They ask this. Did he leave on good terms? That's like in the housing market, when you apply, sure. they want to know, what's your relationship with your old landlord and what is his his or her number so we can get the skinny on you? You apply they for a new know. job. That's, yes, they that's what they're know. doing. They want to know how it, how it went for you. And what what led you to transferring besides the money? Sure. <laughs> sure. I feel like that's probably the best answer you can give right now. It's like they were offering me more money. Be honest. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's nothing wrong with that. Sure, yeah. I'm not knocking it. But uh, one thing I've thought about throughout this whole draft process since we're on it, Jaden Daniels, a guy people think might go two, when he left Arizona State, that whole team threw uh, a party at his locker being like, thank God this guy is gone. And I haven't been able to shake that. This is like, why? Why did they hate? It's Arizona State. You know what I mean? This. Why did they hate him so much? Man, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, they posted it. They were like, good riddance. They were, they were thrilled for you. Wow. Whoa, okay. Yeah. Yeah, haven't been able to shake that. All right. Well, just go ahead and jump into Coleman. Good play. Like I said, jump ball. I, I don't really know what to say with this because this is all he – this is a lot of what he does. Sure. Is you're going to see him high point the ball, good strength, good hand strength. He's going to catch the football. But the thing that is one of the things that's concerning, you know, last year we talked about Jalen Reed at Michigan State. Yeah. Uh, Coleman was on his team. Didn't notice it. Didn't notice it. I think our boy uh, Witherspoon locked him down and had a very colorful (laughs) conversation with him prior to the game and tell him what he's going to do and accomplish that goal. That doesn't sound like DW. That doesn't sound like the, the Devin Witherspoon we all know and love. He's going to run, get active. Now, high point the ball. Now, he didn't catch that football, but my point is his eagerness to go up there and get the football. I also believe they do, coordinators get lazy and they just throw, they just say, hey, we're going to, we know what you do best, so we're not going to make you do anything. Now, I got to critique him the same way I did as Daz Walker. I mean, he opened it up the gate a little yeah. bit, right? But look at this, though. I didn't see this yeah. out of Dez. This is why teams are going to say, hey, we'll take them. We'll coach them up. We'll get them better, coach. Bang. Spins a, spins a DB. Oh, get out of there. I'm going to go out of bounds. Tricked you. Close it. Don't close your eyes, son, when you're trying to make a tackle. <laughs> 
never good. Keep your head up. Look at the strength right there. Now, yes, he's running some good routes. I need to see this more. Give him a little hezzy at the top. Throws. He said, hey, I know we're in Death Valley, but no orange tees at the club, okay? None at the club. Let me rewind that just for some of y'all. No orange tees at the club, even when I'm in your hood. Ah! Look at the corner. He he wanted no parts of got a little zig motion going underneath. Bang. Use his hand at the top. Catch a strong pass. Like that. You gotta keep that in your arsenal. Just let teams know I can go short. Oh, gotta fight through contact. Does a little bit. Quarterback comes off of him because he doesn't win. Obviously, he's looking at the zone down underneath, but it doesn't matter. That's still on that's still on tape that he was able to disrupt you at the line that goes in the memory bank of the offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator as well. Strong hands, I like it. Doesn't get the football, but he knows it. He says, hey, <laughs> I won. He can't believe it. <laughs> but but you see, this is something though, right? He, he, quarterback believes in his guy. Now, the quarterback is late, but they run a little stunt. Defender says, hey, I can't get there. Love how he uses his hands at the top. Ah, swims him by. This, talk, this is why quiet feet and getting outside of the framework of your body does it. Watch the DB when he's outside his framework. Watch what he does from here. Now, when you're inside of your framework, you should be able to lean forward. Mm-hmm. And and burst, go forward. But he can't. You know what the DB has to do? He has to now adjust to get back inside his framework to then go and use the power. Watch. See? Yeah, he's going to reload. Reloads. And the Coleman says, man, I beat him. Can't believe it. How dare he mess up this good play by me? In the slot. Tax of football. His run after catch is unbelievable. Strong. Strong, strong, strong. Try one more time. Boom. This is good game two. Because my man Slick Rick, like I like to call him, was in that game doing his thing. Down at the number three position. Attacks. Big boys the defender. Just showed that that's why teams want him. Down down at the bottom, no hesitation. DB is eyeing the quarterback. He's not moving. He goes straight up. Defender goes inside. I I had this play because I thought it would have been interesting. If the quarterback would have thrown the ball to Coleman, who wins? If FSU guys say Coleman wins, definitely. Florida State, Florida guys say Definitely my guy wins. You know what the quarterback says? <laughs> I don't trust neither one of them, so yeah, I'm throwing in somebody else. No, let's not find out. Yep. I'm not trying to find out at my expense. I'm trying to get drafted, bro. And I think that at this time, this is the backup. So he's like, hey, I'm just trying to keep my job. <laughs> Again, jump ball. Doesn't fight through the contact. I didn't watch this game, but I'm imagine I'm imagining that the referee is calling it on the defense. But you're not gonna always get that call though. No. So No. And I mean that PFF's got about a thirty three percent contested catch rate, mm. uh, which is not not what you're looking for with a Well, here's part of that low contest contest rate. Quarterback was just throwing the football up to him. It wasn't his fault, man. Some of the passes he was throwing up to him, he shouldn't have thrown up to him. But also your quarterback, your receiver has to protect the throw. Right. Like the the play we led off with, the jump ball uh, with yes. two in the end zone. Do you think Polk comes down with that? I mean, I just saw Polk. I think Coleman comes down with that. I just don't like the – I don't like the quarterback throwing the football there. Sure, sure. I think it's a. I think that's not a great read. 
spins spins the DB, comes back. There's our guy Johnny Wilson, who probably needs to play tight end. Big dude. Uh, and nope, I'm not doing a breakdown on him, so don't ask me. Oh, we got it. We got a runner in place, baby. Look. <laughs> Tries RP. me insane. I don't know why this was on here, but good block. It was an excellent block. Willen blocker. Nope. Yeah, not comes. on that one. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's why I had it on there. <laughs> I remember now. I remember. Right. But I think part of the reason he's so divisive is his highlights are so high. And then when you when you go look at the complete picture. When you look at the stats, when I saw 658 yards, I thought for certain I was missing something like, or the PFF was missing something like, yeah, they haven't input all the data yet. So it's one of those weird things where it's like the eye test and the stats don't necessarily align. And when I watch him, I'm out on this type of receiver because I've been personally burned very recently by Nikhil Harry. And when I look at their profiles, when I look at what they did at the combine, it's it's a similar picture. Now, Florida State didn't have Coleman running cross routes like Arizona State had Nikhil Harry running. So I it's interesting to see him have a different route tree. Well, he a, played he played basketball at Michigan State as well. Yeah, very similar right. to uh, and, Harry. And he was a pretty darn good basketball player. He's a pretty good football player. No doubt. Uh, but, but that's but, like, but what one of the things I struggle with him in, in in my evaluation and sharing, I said versus Clemson, the quarterback ju- just threw the ball up to Coleman, not his fault for the quarterback putting him in those positions. Now that's also the offensive coordinator putting him in that position, giving him that designated role, which. Teams and people judge, like I saw some comments like Tom, Thomas, Brian Thomas, uh, only ran so many routes. You're mm-hmm. absolutely right. I think, I, to be accurate, I think he ran four, max five routes. But that was his role in that offense. He didn't say, hey, coach, I only am going to run these five routes because there's nine routes on a route tree. Sure. So, but some offenses don't utilize or you get pigeonholed into, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? He, I think, I believe if I go back just off the, he, he had 20-something touchdowns. Mm-hmm. So it ain't like he didn't do anything with those three or four routes, four or five routes, right? And I think Coleman is suffering from that where, He's used to out athletic, being athletic, out athleticing the corner. And I know that's not a word, but I'm just talking ball. Sure, yeah, out athleting. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's out athleting him. But that's not going to work when the athlete you're playing against may be more athletic and better, stronger, taller, and faster than you. So now that's where technique comes in. And watching his pro day, he gets outside. Of the framework a lot. He gets outside, and the framework is outside of your shoulders. He gets stuck. I'm talking about stuck, stuck. Gets stuck out of his break, drifts in his breaks. Other than a gauntlet drill, I'm not seeing him run a true straight line. And he doesn't separate as much as people hope. His physical presence is something teams will bring him in and get and maybe ask a few more questions to say, hey, I like his measurables, but can we depend on him? And where's his headspace? The the team, I think, not the team, but the system, I think, could get the most out of him is what we've seen the Saints do with two bigger body receivers over the last 20 years, Michael Thomas and Marquez Colston. Now, they didn't play the same type whoa, of football whoa, at all. Whoa, 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 whoa. But hold on. Let's hear it. The Saints no longer have that system. No, no, no. That's why I said that type of system. Carmichael is gone. He's been let go, relieved of his duties. 
who was a regime of Sean Payton. So right. are you saying the Saints system, which means the Saints system, is now in Denver? Denver. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because when I when I watch him, when I watch Coleman specifically, I saw him winning the most parts of the field. I remember Colston winning, which was kind of like that big slot. I think when you see a six three guy like this, you naturally want to put him on the outside and toss him jump balls. There's no proof that he's like really good at that, and that's not a knock on him. Most people aren't, but when I've like, I think that was the biggest disservice that was done in Nikhil Harry was, Oh, you're just, we're just going to throw you jump balls, even though you're not good at this thing, get him in the middle of the field, get him in space. Most of the touchdowns I saw him score, he was lining up as a big slot would just kind of put his foot in the ground and get open immediately. I think yeah. that's where he'll see a lot of success at the next level. And he's going to see that success because his short area of quickness is really, really good. Like this little short area, fist fight in the phone booth, all of that bang right there. Quick. He's there long speed, against a savvy veteran for him in college Coleman was 50 50 for a savvy veteran with the same measurables 75 25 because he's the rookie right you got to prove it I mean I I, I can audit, I can see why some teams probably have him you know top four or five still on their board other teams probably that 10 to 15 range and I do think his success will be most tied to who drafts him and who utilizes him to his the best of his abilities. Here's why I would tell you where it's not. Here's why I tell you he's not four or five on people's draft boards. Because in those draft boards, even if you're not drafting Harrison and you can't draft him, he's still number one or number two, depending on who. You know, Rome is still number two, number three. So he's not with what Xavier Worthy has done, what Leggett has done. He's not four or five, bro, on these draft boards. He's not. We're also assuming all these teams are are smart. No, 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 no. I'm 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 not saying I know what you're saying. I'm I'm saying he's not four or five. He he's not four. He used to be four, but what he's done, he's not four. It's also weird, like we talk about his long speed. On a couple of those, but he seems faster with the ball in his hands than when he's running against air. Mm. Which I don't know what to take yeah. from that, but it's just something I've never. That's noticed. called beer goggles. That's what that is. <laughs> when you have, when you, when you start talking about man, he's faster with the ball in his hands. That's the beer goggles. As at the end of the night, baby. He was, <laughs> he was, that's he was the, hey, getting that's more. Not convincing se- yourself. No, 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 no. I, like I said, I'm out on him because of Nikhil Harry, so it has nothing to do with him. But I am in okay, fact okay. out on him, but. When he went like the he was getting more separation when he had the ball in his hands than when he was just running one on one. I don't know what to make of that. Um, Coleman, he's, he's he's a he's a guy that's unique. I think some teams are going to be chopping at the bit to get him. I think some teams are going to be a little bit hesitant. That's why we still got a couple of days left, uh, a couple of weeks left be, before draft, and where teams can uh, put him now in a position and lock him in where they believe on their board he should be. and um, But I think this is going to be – Coleman is a very unique one because he hasn't really had a 1,000 yards season. He wasn't really doing anything at Michigan State that wowed you. However, he did a few things that you go, oh, piques my interest. But he never really took that step forward. And I'm interested to see where teams value him by where they pick him. Is he a pick that you get in the second round or third round? Or is he a pick where he's available, you're on the 20s and 30s, you say, hey, we'll get this guy. I don't know. But I I do believe that what Nikhil Harry did not do has burned some people in putting him in that same category. For sure. And one other positive for him, he's the youngest guy we've talked about. He's the only player we've talked about that hasn't turned 21 yet. But that also goes in it. If he's not 21, and where does that team draft him? Is he mature enough? He can't be. He's barely 21. He's not mature. But in his young, young years, what has he done with his idle time? Coleman from Florida State, that's my breakdown.